engagement in the digital age. Uh, my name is Kaylee, and we have Andy here with us as well. We are going to be tag teaming this webinar, and um, we just wanted to first ask if you would do us a favor and put yourself on mute using the green icon in your GoToMeeting control panel. That will help eliminate the distractions um, in the background and uh, will just help us stay focused on the presentation. Um, so with that, I think we're ready to begin, and Andy, you can take it away. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kaylee. Uh, like she said, we're going to be talking about family engagement in the digital age. And uh, when we say digital, it means we're talking about technology. And uh, when we talk about technology, we're going to be talking about computers and phones and devices that have screens on them. And uh, uh, as we all know, technology can help us uh, bridge the gap in relationship with people, but it can also cause some distractions. And we don't believe that um, that families are completely disengaged. We think that they're just distracted. And um, uh, it's amazing how every member of the family can find some sort of technology that uh, consumes time and pulls away from, uh, from family relationships. And uh, you can see in the little icon here, this is just a few of them. Uh, but yeah, there's, a, there's lots of ways that we can, uh, we can get distracted. But in this workshop, we're going to really try to challenge you to take some of these things and make them bonding moments that, uh, that draw us closer to our families. So with that, we are going to move into a short little survey. Um, before we get started, we are, we're going to cover a bunch of different things in this, in this webinar, um, and we're going to work through a lot of different statistics that we see in culture today of how um, technology is, is bleeding into our family time um, and just being a little bit of a distraction for us. But we wanted to make this a little bit more real for us here in this webinar right now. And so if you would just take some time and walk through this survey with us, that'd be great. So first question is, in your home, who spends the most time in front of a screen? A, children, B, adults, or C, equal? Secondly, in the last week, has anyone in your family texted, emailed, or spoken on the phone during family mealtime? This is just a yes or no question. In your home, who has checked emails or texted? more in bed in the last week? Children, adults, equal, or none of us? On average, how many hours a week do you spend interacting with your family without a screen being present? So this is no TV, no phones, uh, no computers. There's no screen present. It's just, um, it's just family engagement with, with no screen. Less than five hours, five to 10, 10 to 15 hours or more than 15 hours a week. This is a good one. In the last week, have you gotten into a strong disagreement with your kids regarding the use of technology? Yes or no? As an adult, how many hours a day do you spend on media? So that's in front of a TV, computer, your phone, your tablet. Less than five hours, five to 10, 10 to 15 hours, or more than 15 hours a day. Okay, now for this next section of the, uh, the presentation, we're gonna take those same questions that you were just asked. We're going to identify areas of our life that those questions are dealing with, and we're going to, um, to explore how in those six different areas of our lives, uh, technology can be a distraction or it can, um, uh, it can be uh, a help to our relationships. Uh, the first question we asked you was, in your home, who spends the most time in front of a, of a screen? Uh, this is just kind of a general family kind of category. How does technology kind of impact a family? Uh, statistically, uh, uh, parents are just as dependent on technology as teens and tweens. Uh, sometimes we are, are quick to think that our kids are a little bit more dependent on it than we are, uh, especially if, if those kids are teenagers. Uh, but uh, statistics seem to indicate that adults struggle with, um, with separating themselves from their technology and devices. Uh, in fact, only 10% of parents and 6% of teens say they try to take one day off a week from their digital usage. Uh, now, all of these stats that we're going to be talking about right now do come from reputable sources. Uh, we haven't created any of these statistics uh, of, on our own trying to um, 
supplement our own uh, findings here. We're um, uh, we're pulling from research, and uh, you should see those in the uh, the gray section. This one came from the Barna Research Group. Uh, the next category, we had asked you the question, in the last week, has anyone in your family texted, emailed, or spoken on the phone during family mealtimes? We know that mealtimes are a, a very significant time of our day for us to bond with our kids and for our kids to kind of bond with us. Uh, amazing conversations happen. Uh, often, you know, values are transferred to our children at this time. Children learn table manners. They learn how to engage in conversation with adults. Uh, there's so much good stuff that happens. Uh, during meal times, uh, but technology has the ability to distract from that. Uh, interestingly enough, nearly 50% of both parents and teens said they emailed, texted, or talked on the phone while eating last week. Within a seven-day period, 50% of them were admitting that they did it at least once. They certainly could have done it much more than that. Uh, furthermore, 40% of youth and 33% of parents uh, have used two or more screens simultaneously during the same time period. Uh, at first I thought, okay, well, how many screens can you really have at a dinner table? But then I started remembering, okay, well, uh, when I grew up, we used to have the TV on, um, and we were watching the news while talking, and so now if that's still the case and we have uh, cell phones or iPads or something else going on, you can have a whole lot of screens distracting family time at mealtime. The next category, technology and sleep. We asked you the question, in your home, who has checked emails or text more in bed in the last week? In the last seven days, who does more? Children, adults, equal or none of us. Um, and findings say that 50% of students and 20% of parents have checked email or text in bed in the last seven days. Uh, when we do this one with, with live audiences, this one sometimes surprises people. They think, okay, well, there's certainly no way that my kid is doing it more than, than I am, but statistically, 50% of kids are, where only 20% of parents aren't. Uh, interesting thing, we know that when, uh, when you spend time checking Facebook or, or doing something else on your phone, time can go by so quickly. And if you, it's, it's supposed to be sleep time for your, your family or even for yourself, uh, that's wasted time that you're not going to get back, and the lack of sleep does have a negative effect on us the next day. We're all, all too familiar with that. The next category is technology and quality time. We ask the question, on average, how many hours a week do you spend interacting with your family without the screen being present? This one was absolutely shocking to me. Uh, back in the year 2000, only 6.1 hours on average were spent by the average family a week, six hours a week. Uh, doing things without a screen being present. Uh, now, that's not to say that when a screen is present you're, present, present, you're not having quality time, because you can have quality time with a screen involved. But, um, uh, th but that number actually gets a little bit worse as, as the years go by. In 2008, it dropped to only 4.1 hours per week. Um, that's that's kind of shocking to me. Next category we want to talk through is technology and conflict. We asked you the question in the last week, have you gotten into strong disagreements with your kids regarding the use of technology? Uh, this one doesn't seem to be too surprising. 25% of parents and students said they had strong disagreements about the limits on media and technology on a weekly basis. Uh, I'm surprised that one's not a little bit higher. But um, uh, yeah, parents go on and say, 50% uh, of them worry that technology and media is wasting their children's time. Uh, so we definitely know that this tends to be a, a topic that has potential to be a, a hot topic. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk through that a little bit more in a moment. Technology and time management. Uh, this one, I think, might have been the most shocking to me. Uh, we asked the question, as an adult, how many hours a day do you spend on media? Most of the other questions were in a week's time. This is in a day's time. We asked you less than five hours, five to 10, 10 to 15, or more than 15. And on average, adults are spending 12 hours and five minutes a day on media. Now, how is that possible? There's 24 hours in a day, and eight of them, say, are reserved for sleep. You only have 16 hours left. Are, is it really possible that only Four of those hours are not consumed by media and technology. And when I started thinking about it, 
yeah, we wake up in the morning and we turn on the news to check the weather or traffic and we get in the car and uh, we're on the phone and we get to work and I don't know about you, but my job has me on the computer a full eight hours the whole time that I'm here. And then I get in the car and back on the phone um, and get home and again, TV's on, catching the news, whatever. Uh, and then, of course, we have to sit down and reward ourselves after a long day by relaxing in front of our favorite TV show. And it's easy to see how you only had four hours of non-media time throughout the day. Uh, this has the potential to, um, to wreak havoc on family relationships. Uh, what we want to do now is, is not so much talk about the evils of technology. Technology is, is something that we're going to be dealing with in the culture that we live in, and there's absolutely nothing we can do to change that. Uh, at Family First, we're not going to try to convince anybody that technology is evil and it should be avoided. Uh, we just want to find practical ways to help people work through it so that we're not a disengaged family or a distracted family, but we can really enjoy quality time in the culture that we live in um, using the technologies that we have at our disposal. Um, as we move into the next section, we're going to take these same six categories and we're going to talk about resources that we found that can help to address the um, those segments of our lives um, and the way that technology plays in into that area of our life. Uh, but first, as we transition into that, we want to show you a, a quick little video. Uh, we understand this is a car commercial that we're about to show you, and no, we're not trying to sell you a Chevy. Uh, but this commercial, we thought, really captured the idea of what we're trying to, uh, to do with this workshop, just challenge thinking and challenge the role that, that media plays um, in, in our thinking, particularly with our family. You'll see at the very beginning of this video, uh, some parents are distracted. They're engaged with uh, digital devices, and they're missing life with their kids going on right in front of them. By the time it's done, uh, they're kind of using technology and engaging with their family in a little bit more meaningful and fun ways. Uh, I do want to apologize if the media, the, the video quality is, um, is a little bad. I know we're recording this. Sometimes when we uh, make uh, these webinar presentations, uh, the, the video uh, quality is, uh, is a little choppy. But um, uh, nevertheless, let's check out a car commercial. Did we start thinking a lot just what's so perfect? Probably somewhere between that trip to Paris and that six day juice cleanse. At some point it became more important to show off than to share. Starting to see the good stuff around. Just looking to focus on what makes our lives look good on the screen. After every perfect sunset we post, at the moment we aren't showing sure off. Maybe we should. Those are the moments that don't need to be crossed. Or filtered. At all. Well, I swear I did not see it. So we thought that was kind of a fun video and a good way just to um, challenge the, um, the way that we allow technology to distract us from
quality family times going on around us. Uh, when we do these, uh, these presentations in more of a live setting and we can get audience feedback, we like to just generally ask at this point, can you guys tell us what the benefits are of an engaged family? And right away, start, hands start going up and people start calling things out because everyone understands that when you have an engaged family, it affects every facet of the child's life. It affects the parent's lives and, and all in positive ways. Uh, likewise, we can see that there's, um, there's you know, prices that we pay when we get disengaged. Um, but uh, I'll go ahead and give you some of the, the top answers that, that we found. Again, what I'm about to share with you comes from uh, government research. And uh, uh, this is mainly dealing with uh, school settings and how uh, engaged families benefit students uh, in a school setting, but not, not exclusively. Uh, more consistent school attendance is one of the big ways that we see uh, kids benefit. Uh, they get better grades, increased motivation. This doesn't have to be school related. This could be in any area of life. Uh, fewer behavioral problems, increased ability to learn, more likely to stay in school, uh, enhanced creativity, and interestingly enough, improved time management skills. This comes from the United States Department of Education. Uh, how do we make family a priority in the digital age? This is the question we want to ask. We're going to propose six ways that you can do that, that each address the, uh, the six categories of um, uh, survey and statistic questions that we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, running through them very quickly, the first one, we think that uh, you should demonstrate parental leadership. We'll talk about that in just a moment. You, you think you should connect intentionally over family meals. You should set boundaries on technology. We need to schedule family fun time. We need to communicate proactively. And we want to make sure we don't waste the time that we have. Uh, let's break down each one of these and talk about what they mean. Um, demonstrating parental leadership. We feel like um, parents have uh, a wealth of experience and resources. Um, and uh, we've learned from our own mistakes. We understand uh, life a little bit more than our children are at the young age in which they come into our families. And we think that parents uh, need to be the one guiding their kids to, um, to make proper choices and to uh, establish healthy habits. And we feel like that's what healthy parental authority looks like. Uh, and we want to encourage parents to, um, to be confident in their role as the parent and engage their children in ways that are going to be in the best interest of their children. Um, there's a really great book that we want to talk about. It's called Have a New Kid by Friday. If you've never read a book by Dr. Kevin Lehman, uh, he's a really uh, entertaining author. And in this book, he, um, he kind of uh, takes kind of a, a mischievous kind of an approach where he's talking about uh, surprising your children at the end of a week with, um, with a new behavior pattern as the parent. Uh, one of the things he says over and over again is, you're the parent, you're in charge, say it one time, turn your back, and walk away. And uh, with my own kids, I found this to be true. Uh, if children want to challenge what you say, uh, if you stand there and let them challenge, they're going to challenge it. But if you say something and you turn away and walk out of the room, they have to be following you to, to challenge you. And it kind of takes some of the, um, the uh, uh, steam out of their, um, uh, their comeback there. Uh, so it's just a clever way of being intentional about how you're in charge. And uh, uh, one of the things we'd like to, um, to, to challenge parents to do is really set an example on your own behavior. Remember, the statistic that we looked at earlier said that parents are just as likely to be dependent on technology as, as their children are. And if we want our children to have better behaviors regarding their own technology, often that has to start with us. No kid likes to listen to the parents say, do as I say, not as I do. We need to, um, we need to model that kind of behavior. And that's one of the great ways that we think you can take uh, parental leadership and uh, really set an example for your kids. Uh, you'll learn really great things. If you read the book, Have a New Kid by Friday, if you go to the back of that, there are uh, over 100 categories of life issues that uh, Dr. Lehman provides practical assistance and advice on. Uh, many of those are technology related. Uh, so definitely a book that we think you might enjoy. Also, if you look at um, uh, 10 Ways to Lead Your Family, that's one of the All Pro Dad resources. Again, we are from Family First. We have All for Dad is our fatherhood program, iMom is our motherhood program. We'll throw a couple of those resources out here as well, just because we think that they're uh, things that you'll benefit from and enjoy. But uh, uh, yeah, certainly we're, we're going to be pushing some other resources as well. 
So, okay, that was the, uh, the first one. Uh, we also want to tell you about uh, connecting intentionally over family meals. We know that this is important, but we have so many excuses for why we don't make mealtime a priority. Uh, sometimes part of the challenge is we just don't have time to, to make meals uh, for our family to come together. And, and that's okay. You can have very simple meals. The, the most important part of a mealtime relationally is not the food that you're eating or the quality of the food that you're eating, but it's more the conversation that you're able to have when you all come together uh, and you're eating something together. Uh, but for those of you that want something a little bit more substantial, more uh, special to, to have as your family is coming together, uh, the Pioneer Woman is just a, one example of a really great website that you can go to and get lots of quick, easy meal planning ideas. 16-minute uh, meals you'll find there. Uh, the next thing that, that we think is important is not just uh, getting together uh, physically and having, having food to eat, but we want quality conversation to be started. We think that's when uh, the, the real power of, of family meal times uh, is introduced relationally. So um, if you go to imom.com, you're going to see talk starters, uh, lots of little questions, uh, things that you can ask just to get conversation going. They're all open-ended questions. If you've ever asked a yes or no question to a kid and you got a yes or a no answer, you realize that didn't go very far. Uh, but these kind of questions will really help dive into some really great talk. Um, and we have themed questions uh, across the board. So um, definitely encourage you to go look at those. Uh, moving on, we think that you should set boundaries on technology. Uh, boundaries on technology is important. Uh, kids enjoy video games. They enjoy movies. They enjoy computer and, and surfing the web and, and doing all kinds of things that don't really require a lot of um, physical activity. It's easy to kind of become isolated when you're doing this, and that's not necessarily healthy. There's a really great book called The Last Child in the Woods. In this one, the author, Richard Louv, mentions that uh, he backs uh, with, uh, with great research the reality that he can link some of the worst childhood issues, uh, obesity, depression, attention deficit disorders, to a lack of being exposed to the outdoors. And it really is a fascinating read. Uh, he gives practical suggestions for how you can get kids uh, away from the computer and the TV to, um, to get outside and enjoy nature. And he introduces some tremendous benefits that come from that uh, when you get kids just exposed to the great outdoors. Um, one of the ways you can uh, set boundaries on technology is, is just limiting it and, and getting them distracted. Another way that you can set boundaries on technology is the social media contract. We realize that sometimes um, social media uh, and uh, the internet can be detrimental to, to, to students. There's all kinds of cyber bullying and um, uh, pornographic things that you can stumble upon quite by accident. And um, uh, so trying to help protect kids and set limits while they are using the technology uh, one of the great resources that iMom provides is a social media contract. Uh, again, you can get this from imom.com, and um, it just kind of walks you through uh, some things that you can come to an agreement with your kids on for how they will and will not use social media and, uh, and other kinds of technology. Uh, all of this is for their protection, but uh, sometimes it takes, again, the parent being a healthy authority saying, okay, if we're going to allow you to use this technology, you have to agree to do it within the guidelines of what we we set for you for your own good and safety. Um, and down on the bottom, the kids have a chance to sign it and to agree to it, and uh, it becomes official uh, document that the parents can remind the kids about. Definitely something we think that you should look into. If you haven't seen one of these before, you can get them other places other than just imom.com and all per dad, but um, definitely we, um, we think that once we have are, are well worth your time. Uh, moving on, scheduling family fun time. Uh, it's important to, to be intentional about uh, about what we do with our kids. And sometimes if, if we're not intentional to make the time happen, it's just going to be one life distraction after another. And next thing, we haven't really set aside time just to have a good time with our kids. Uh, and so this is why we, we think that you need to be intentional about scheduling that. Um, there's lots of websites you can go to, lots of great resources, lots of books you can, um, you can turn to to get ideas for how to better engage your kids. But um, uh, this one, My Kids Adventures, is a really great website. If you go to that, uh, there's all kinds of ideas. Every, every idea they give gives practical uh, 
step-by-step -step instructions for what to do. Uh, if you're wanting to create some sort of an activity with your children or something you can do in, inside, outside, uh, there's pictures and all kinds of good stuff to go with that. Of course, you can get lots of ideas like the uh, All for Dead um, uh, game night uh, stuff there. Uh, little cards you can break up, put into a jar, and just kind of draw what the activity is going to be that we do this time. Um, some of those include technology like the vintage movie night and the home movie night. You can use technology as you're looking to, um, to bridge the gap in, uh, and strengthen relationships. You don't have to be finding things apart from technology, but uh, you'll find good resources that help you both use technology and other things uh, when you go to that website. Uh, communicate proactively. This one is really, really powerful. Uh, this is dealing with the, the concept of technology and conflict. Uh, we know that, that conflict happens so many times when you know, someone in the family does something that emotionally engages me and, and I find that I'm reacting to that and that's when tensions start to fly. Um, and, and we want to help communicate proactively here. Just steps on communicating. Uh, there's a really great resource, uh, fivelovelanguages.com. They've got a book, they've got a website, there's online tests that you can take. Um, the premise of this is uh, there's five ways, regardless of age or culture, uh, where uh, you recognize love and you express love. And uh, very quickly, they are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. And the idea is, uh, uh, I've taken this test, and I'm actually a words of affirmation guy, and my wife is a quality time girl. And uh, so she wants to, to spend time. She's also a physical touch. She really likes it when I'm holding her hand, and I'm, I'm uh, just you know putting my arm around her. And it doesn't have to be anything intimate. It can just be something very, very non-sexual, but um, uh, something very profound. For her, holding hands is not all that meaningful to me. Um, she doesn't say enough nice things to me, and I don't hold her hand enough. And um, uh, when we were newlyweds, we came across this book. There was a time that we were kind of going through some tension, and, and we actually found that this book gave us the language to use for me to say, and it might sound really stupid, but I actually said it, I'll hold your hand if you'll say something nice to me. And what happened in that moment is she understood that I'm trying to move toward her in a way that's meaningful to her. I'm communicating in a way that she's going to understand that, and I'm asking her to meet me where I am. And so this, this tool for me personally has been one that has really helped draw me closer to my wife. Even with my kids, I'm learning that they've got different ways that they're wired that, that are not like me, but I'm learning how to connect with them in those ways. And we think that um, if you'll take these resources, you'll find that they, they can help you communicate in meaningful ways um, that you might not have ever thought to that might be different than the way that you would communicate. Now this next one over here, the, uh, the family team meeting, uh, we think again that conflict often happens when, when people start reacting to an emotion that they're feeling or uh, to a circumstance that's just played out. Um, reacting is never a good way to proactively move toward relationship. So uh, the idea for this team meeting is this gives you a time to sit down with your family and just kind of talk through issues before they become issues. Um, if it's going to be a, some sort of a limit on technology, you can introduce that. And before, you know, the parents are getting frustrated at the kids because the kids are always texting and it's socially impolite and, and, and they're reacting and wanting to pick a fight with their kids. They're able just to kind of talk through things very logically and move on to an agreed consensus. Um, again, you can get that at imom.com. Check out all these resources. We think that they're really helpful. Uh, the last one we want to talk about deals with technology and time management. So many times uh, we live in a culture that we're just saying yes to way too many things and we're, we're maxing out our schedules with so many commitments and obligations and responsibilities that we just don't have anything left to give. Uh, the book here, Margin, uh, talks about how we can set parameters on, uh, on the things that we agree to. Uh, it talks about emotional, physical, financial, and time-related uh, responsibilities. Uh, it defines margin as the difference between our load and our limits. And so many times we, we take on as our load so much that we push ourselves to the limits of the time and the strength and the, the, the mental capacity we have to give to accomplish the things that we've taken on as our load and we just push ourselves to the limits and that's when relationships get fractured and um, uh, bad things can happen. Um, but in this book, if, if we can carve out margin, 
which is just giving us a little bit more space before we hit those limits. Um, then we're going to be able to handle the responsibilities we have. We're going to have a little bit more free time to engage with our kids. We're not going to be quite as uptight. We'll enjoy life a little bit more, and we won't live with that anxiety that comes when we overbook ourselves. Um, a resource here from All Pro Dad that you might find helpful is five ideas for a rainy day. They're, they're simple things that you can do. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be raining outside for you to do these. The idea is, you know, on a rainy day is just a, a day that, that, that will come a little bit later. If you are armed with some activities to do whenever you happen to realize that, that time is available and you can do something with your kids right now or with your, with your family, having something that you can just quickly unpack that doesn't require a lot of thinking or preparation just to make the most of those, those moments that come, uh, that's what we want to challenge you to do. Again, tremendous resources you're going to find at allperdad.com and imom.com. We definitely encourage you to check those out. Um, but more than just family relationships, we think that um, uh, we need to take quality family engagement stuff to our schools. And um, uh, we do think that it needs to happen first with us as individuals before we're really going to be able to help other people. But um, uh, once uh, some ways that you can get connected uh, at school, uh, the National PTA has three organizations that are part of the MORE Alliance, Men Organized to Raise Engagement, uh, Watchdogs, uh, All Pro Dad, and Strong Fathers, Strong Families. These are, are programs that get men plugged into schools and get them engaging with the school and with their children uh, in a very meaningful way at school. We definitely think that you should look into those. But more than just male engagement specific things, some other ideas, you know, pizza night, I'm on mornings, meet the teacher, carnivals, movie nights, dad's clubs. There's lots of things that schools are already doing or that you can implement that get parents there connecting with their kids. Uh, sometimes parents just need to be given the opportunity and the kids need to be excited about re recruiting the parents to come to these moments where the parents and kids can connect with each other in meaningful ways. It doesn't have to be a fundraiser. It doesn't have to be uh, a parent-teacher meeting when there's you know, conflict with little Jimmy. There can be lots of reasons why you would want to get together and um, uh, spend time together as a family. Um, kind of in closing, we just wanted to um, uh, put some information up here and uh, remind you that uh, here at Family First, we're here to serve you. If you have any questions, if you're looking to engage with, with your family, we want to make ourselves available for you for that purpose. Uh, lots of great resources on our websites, and of course there's, um, there's contact information here where you can reach us. I uh, want to be respectful of your time, so we're going to go ahead and call it a, um, a day here. If, uh, if you have any questions, certainly reach out to us uh, at the information here that you see on your screen, and we'll do our best to work with you to help you better engage with your family. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely, and thank you so much, Andy, for leading us in that. All of these resources are available, and we can send them to you um, through a link if you guys are interested. And so just keep that in mind. Our, like Andy said, our information is on the screen, um, so jot that down. And um, if you want more information about anything that you heard today, we would be happy to help you with that. So we'll look forward to hearing from you soon.